you guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing another full week of workouts video, which I'm really excited about because this time it's Costa edition. So if you're new, if this like randomly popped up on your recommended or something, I am living in Costa Rica for about like two months. And so my workout split has changed quite a bit since being here just because there's not like a traditional standard conventional commercial gym here so it's kind of been forcing me to get more creative with my workouts and honestly majority of my movement since being here has been outside of the weight training gym so for this week of workouts you're kind of going to be seeing a blend between pilates yoga running and lifting weights and then maybe some functional hip movements we'll see if we get into that this week it just totally depends every week kind of has been looking different it just varies i more so have just been trying to intentionally do that and, and just play it by ear and not have such like a rigid schedule and just enjoy this time of taking my body through different forms of movement and i find i feel my best when i'm like diving into different forms of of exercise so hopefully this can inspire you to try out some different types of movement as well if that's been what's interesting you today we're going to start off with some pilates it is monday and traditionally i've been doing move with nicole I love her. She's been my bestie so far. I love her videos and she has so many freaking at home Pilates videos. But today I want to try to kind of do my own at home Pilates inspired video. I'm obviously no Pilates instructor, so don't like take what I'm doing like, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But I'm kind of just more so doing a Pilates inspired workout, also with kind of some traditional like body weight movement calisthenic um, patterns that I know of as a personal trainer. All right, y'all, let's get it. All right, guys, so this is my first time like trying to show you a Pilates workout and I'm realizing this is so much harder than I thought it was going to be um, rather than I just feel like it's so much easier to like give you a standard weight training workout. This I just feel like was so fluid and I just was kind of doing all these different things. So I'm going to try to write it out in the ca uh, not the caption in the description box first and foremost. So go there if you want to really know the specifics of this workout. But I really was just kind of free flowing. So like here I started off with just a lot of more so yoga movements to get a good stretch dynamic warm up. I was warming up the spine, my shoulder joints, all that good stuff. So I was trying to I was using move with Nicole as an inspiration in the sense that she likes to do series where she'll repeat like a few different exercises and do it in a loop and then kind of will repeat that a few times so that was kind of the structure of this so like this was me kind of activating my core with kind of rocking back and forth and then I did some shoulder taps and then here I was doing some reverse lunges with an arm sweep and then I went into some pulses with some squats so I really was freestyling this though if I'm being honest like then I went on to my toes so I just was kind of doing what felt right I must say though it turned out really good like after this I was totally sweating and I felt great so I'm really happy with the way this turned out i just feel like it's hard for me to like entirely map this out without doing just like a straight up follow along pilates workout with you guys you know what i'm saying and have you guys watch it through but so i essentially just repeated um all of that a second time i added in some pulses as well and then i believe i did more squats yep with going on the toes that just also helps to get some um calf activation because we all know i don't train calves so we're just going to count that for that <laughs> And then I went into some more kind of ab work. So this is kind of like a downward dog and then you're gonna bring your knee into your chest. And then this is like a little micro movement where you're essentially sliding your knee up and down. I kind of picture it like I'm rubbing it up against the back of my arm. That sounds weird, but it just is kind of, also like a mini pike is another way to kind of visualize it. And I also like to always keep my belly button pinned to my spine to really activate my core. Then I went into um, a child's pose there. And then I did some, a little booty circuit. So I went into some normal glute bridges and then I went to single legs on each side. So I believe I did eight, eight and eight. And then I essentially just repeated that all the way through. And then after that, I was feeling a little bit more of a challenge. So I grabbed my little mini band, mine is from Hope Fitness Gear, which I do have a code with them that is linked down below in the description box if you would like to purchase from them. And then I held a glute bridge and I elevated onto my toes. This is great because it also helps you keep your core nice and tight. You wanna keep your hips as elevated as you can towards the sky as possible. Then I did little kind of heel walkouts. This is great to activate and engage your hamstrings, which is really good. And so then here I am grabbing my little mini band and I essentially did that whole series a second time through. So I did normal glute bridges and then I did glute bridges on each leg. You also don't have to keep your leg up to the sky. I just was personally preferring it. And 
and then I added in some abductions because again I was kind of freestyling it and I was doing what felt good to my body and then I went into some ab work so I don't know what these are called but again throughout every single one of these ab movements I'm pretending like they're my belly button is a draw cord and so I'm basically using that draw cord to bring my belly button to my spine this helps so much with making sure that your hip flexors don't take over the movement so I did some scissors and then I did some slow bicycles and this is honestly this is why I love doing yoga and Pilates because especially Pilates because I haven't done this much like body weight abs pretty much ever in my life since I was like 14 or 15 so Pilates really helps me get in some actual body weight ab work which I feel like has really helped the strength of my abs obviously so then I also did some of these I'm going to be honest, I don't really know how I'm going to write this out in the description box because I don't know the names of so many of these. Your girl was just flowing, okay? But so then I did repeated that on each side as well. And then, ooh, this was such a good complex that I came up with that I loved. So these are kind of, I'm going to call these little like mermaid high planks. I love these. I got that from Move with Nicole. And then these are my high um, side plank crunches, which I love. So I was basically kind of alternating between those. I did the mermaid, little high planks with the high plank crunches, went back to the mermaid planks. And then I went on to all fours and I did another little booty circuit. So I did normal leg kicks and then I went into pulses. This is also so classic Move with Nicole style. And then I did into dulk, excuse me. Then I went into dock, dock. <laughs> donkey kick pulses and then i did some fire hydrants out to the side and then i added a leg extension as well all the way out to the side and then from there i did some little pulses and this was making it burn okay i'll tell you that so then i went and i repeated the same exact thing on the other side And then from there, I went back into my little mermaid high planks to the high plank crunches and then finished off with the mermaid side plank. I've also really been liking Pilates because I love the ability to stretch in between. It just feels so good, especially with the nature of these movements. So then from there, I slowed it down and I did a lot of different stretches. Um, this one also felt so good. And then I did some back movements. So I don't know what these are called and I should know, but you're basically raising opposite leg to opposite arm. And then I did one rep of a Superman and I alternated between those. And this was a great little complex. I feel like I'm definitely gonna be doing these in my full body circuits as well. And then I went into some swimmers. This looks so funny when the video sped up, but um, those felt really good. And then I went back into um, an upward dog and child's pose and just kind of kept alternating from there. I don't know what this stretch is called, but this feels so good, especially because I'm trying to work on my posture and I feel like it helps me so much with bringing my shoulders back. So I've been obsessed with that. And then I went into some little push up action just to get some more arm work and I extended my leg out to activate my core. And then from there, I went into my chameleons or dive bombers, if you will, not chameleons, dive bombers. Um, so I paired that with these push-ups as a little bit of a superset. This was also a great complex that I could also see myself doing in my functional circuits as well. Then these were honestly a slow killer. You don't think these are very challenging, but they are. So I did kind of like a reverse tabletop pulse situation. And then these are reverse plank marches. These are so good. I used to do those all the time in um, quarantine and I forgot about them and I remember them during this workout and it was honestly a great little complex. I can't even tell you the muscles that this works, but it's like it hits your whole freaking upper body, your whole body. And then from there, that was really much, pretty much it. So then I went into some static stretches because you always want to end your workouts with those when you do want a static stretch. So this felt really good. I did a ton of hip openers and just kind of focus on my breath and let my body relax.
Am I embarrassed to say that I still can't do a handstand? Honestly, going on about three years later, a little bit. But you know what? This is just the reality. Uh, I really thought I was going to be determined to get it during my time here, and it just still really isn't happening for me. I feel like I had a few good reps, but, you know, I just don't know if it's in the cards for me. But so, yeah, then I decided to do some hands, handstands to focus, to practice a little bit more, and still got nowhere. <laughs> All right, party people, welcome to Tuesday. Today we're gonna go um, to the gym and lift some weights. It's gonna be a weight training day and I think I'm gonna do lower body now. I don't really know. I could do full body again, but I don't know. I kind of just wanna do total legs instead. Ugh. Except I don't feel like hip thrusting to die. So we'll see what I get into. I don't think I'm mentally prepared for how much I'm about to be sweating, but uh, here goes nothing. All right, y'all, here we go. This is me strapping my stuff to the gym. And I've been doing some more like quote unquote glue activation work again, basically just some band work before my workouts, just because I feel like it's definitely been helping me just kind of activate that mind to muscle connection and get ready for working out and also just helps with warming up the muscle, obviously, getting some blood flow and getting some pre-contractions in there just to get ready for some movement. I used to do this all the time um, when I first started working out and I just kind of stopped doing it, honestly, because I feel like the TikTok community demonized it and I'm like, no, I really like it. And I honestly feel like it helps me. So I did that for kind of a dynamic warm up. And then I also did, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Foam rolled as well, my back really quick. Um, and so I started off with some normal back squats for four sets of 10 to 12. I did not go crazy heavy just because I honestly get sketched out when there's no safety or anything like that. So I just, again, was just trying to get some, you know, reps in and move some weight, but nothing crazy. And I was focusing really heavily on form here. So speaking of form, I always pretend like I'm sitting back and down into a chair. So I push my hips back and down and then drop back that way. And then I drive up through my heels. My feet are just about shoulder width apart and I'm always having my knees be pushing outwards throughout the whole time. I try to minimize how much they're caving in. Of course, during the end, once you get tired, it's more normal, but you wanna try to be driving your knees out the entire time. And you wanna make sure that you're hitting at least full depth, which is when your thighs are about parallel with the ground. If you can go lower than that, great, but you also don't want to strain out your range of motion. So you want to go down until just before your butt would need to wink under, but you want to make sure you're going deep enough where at least your thighs are parallel with the ground. So then after that, I went into a single leg RDL, which can we just take a moment that this cutesy little rustic gym has a Smith machine? Like, hello, I was so stoked about this. So I did three sets of 10. I don't know if I already said that. And I was standing on a block just for some greater range of motion, just because of the way that that this Smith machine was set up. So essentially this is a normal, the form is the same as normal RDLs where you're just doing it on one leg. So you're basically gonna be pushing your hips backwards to initiate the movement. There's a slight bend in my working leg and I'm driving up through that front leg's heel, the foot that's on the cinder block. And this is gonna be hitting our glutes and our hamstring like crazy, it's so good. I will say you wanna make sure you play around with proper hand placement on the bar so that it feels comfortable and balanced. But I like to make sure I have a nice wide grip grip on the bar so that I feel very comfortable. You also want to pretend like there's a board strapped to your back so I'm not doing any crazy arching or curving. It's nice and straight like there's a board strapped to it and my neck stays in line with my spine. If you want this to hit more of your glute, you should have more of a bend in your leg. But if you want this to hit more hamstring, keep a little bit of a straighter leg and really focus on pushing that hip back to hit more of a stretch in your hammy. And sticking with the Smith machine, I then went into some curtsy lunges for three sets of 10 here. So this is a basically same normal format as a lunge. However, instead of stepping directly back behind you, we're going to be whipping it to the side like about 45 degrees diagonally behind you. The point with this exercise is to get a greater stretch in your upper outer glute muscles, which are the glute medius and minimus, as well as just your normal glute maximus, the big glute muscle as well. But this is a great exercise to help round out the booty and get some movement in the lateral plane as well, which you guys know I'm a huge fan of. So you're essentially, like I said, gonna be using, pushing one leg back diagonally behind you. And I like to kind of push my working hip out a little bit as well, just to increase that stretch. And I'm driving up through that front leg's heel. I kick my foot out a little bit farther in front of me so that when I'm at the bottom of the lunge, my knee is still stacked over my ankle and my shin is relatively 
relatively vertical to again ensure I'm getting a nice big stretch in my glute and that that is the focus here. Then I went back into some bilateral work because I was wanting something else. You know, I need a little something, something. So these are some sumo squats for three sets of 15. They didn't have crazy heavy dumbbells at all. I think this was the heaviest one and it was like 65 pounds. So I just kind of opt for a higher rep range here. But for form, my feet are just past shoulder width apart and my toes are pointed outward. That is the sumo stance that I'm speaking about. And then I just have that dumbbell held down kind of in between my legs. And then, like I said, similar to that back squat, I'm pretending like I'm sitting in a chair. I'm sinking back and down with pushing my hips back and I'm driving up through my heels, which is what's most important here. So then I finished off with some hamstring um, yoga ball curls. I did these for three sets of 15 with a pretty short rest in between. Biggest thing for form here is you want to make sure your core is really nice and tight and you want to keep your hips up. So I'm not letting my hips sag too much when I'm doing this. And that's what really makes you actually recruit your hamstrings and get a bit a bigger burn. So you want to make sure your hips are as high up to the sky as you can. And then you basically want your heels to be on the yoga ball and you want to try to wheel that ball in towards you, bu your bum by contracting in your hamstrings. All right, I am so unbelievably sweaty yet again, but I feel so good. The endorphins are really just, you know, really going at it. I feel like I look so unbelievably American when I'm walking back with my teeny little sports or my teeny little, teeny little booty shorts and my um, teeny little vlog camera, actually my obnoxious vlog camera and my obnoxiously large tripod. <laughs> But what are you gonna do? You know, it's just who I am. Okay, it's my core, but that workout was so good. Nothing crazy, but like, I just feel really good. The endorphins are flowing again. I feel like it was like the appropriate amount of intensity that I loved. I need to go shower and wash myself because I'm dripping sweat again and I forgot a towel. Being in there makes me have dirt like everywhere on my face, but that's fine. Dirt check. These ones didn't get as dirty, which is good. But note to self, 11 a.m. is when everyone's up in that gym. So if I don't want to be like so isolated and like go see people and meet people, I should go at 11 a.m. more often. Happy Wednesday, party people. Today we're gonna to do a yoga class, which I'm so happy I timed this the way that I did because my legs are genuinely sore from yesterday's leg day. That was like my full solid leg day since being here. So definitely feeling really tender, but I'm happy I did that because I definitely have more like my upper body gets more tired in like yoga and Pilates. And so I didn't want those to already be like sore and then have to go to yoga. So now I feel like this is going to be a good balance and like we'll stretch out the legs. My arms will be rested to like be able to do all the yoga poses and everything and like the planks and all that sort of stuff. We're trying out a new yoga studio because why not? And this one is like beachfront. So I'm going to try That was honestly one of the worser uh, yoga classes I've ever been to. It was even, I wouldn't even have classified it as a stretch. I mean, it was kind of a lot of breathing. I just wasn't resonating. All right, we'll leave it at that. So I don't think I'm gonna come back here to take yoga. However, this resort here is so beautiful because that's where I'm at. It was like a yoga class at a resort. Beautiful view. You're standing at the ocean, you can hear the waves, but I'm definitely gonna be back here for this resort.
Okay, moving into some upper body. I was honestly wicked busy this day, so I didn't even, have, I just set up the camera and started filming. But anyways, this just will allow us to hop right into it, shall we? No need to dilly-dally with any small talk, you know? So I started off with some seated rows for three sets of fifth. This workout is so basic just because, again, there's not a ton of equipment in this gym, but we got the job done. So for form here, I'm trying to drive that handle to my belly button. I'm dropping my shoulders away from my ears and I'm squeezing my back muscles in order to bring that handle to my belly button. And I always remember that my hands are just hooks for the weight. So I'm not like bending my elbow and using my bicep to get the handle towards me. I'm squeezing my back muscles and that's what's bringing the handle towards me. I also like to make sure I have a big range of motion. So I'm bringing the handle down till the weights are just about to re-rack. So that's why I lean forward a little bit. And then I come back and have that nice big contraction. So a nice big range of motion there. And then I moved into another back exercise, but more so in the vertical plane now. So this is just a traditional lat pull down. Um, I did three sets of 12 here. Same thing with the other one. I retract my shoulder blades back and down. I'm essentially just dropping my shoulders away from my ears to engage my back muscles and de-engage my traps. And I'm basically squeezing my lats, those things on the side of your back in order to pull this bar down. Again, I'm not trying to pull with my biceps. I'm trying to squeeze with my lats in order to bring the bar down. And I'm bringing it to just about the top of my chest. There's no need to bring it down to like your nipple line or anything like that because it's just kind of past the optimal range of motion. So then... After that, what did I do after this? Oh, then I went into actually some pressing motions. Imagine that. So I did an incline dumbbell um, press for three sets of 15. I always prefer dumbbell more than a barbell. I just feel like it feels more comfy for me, you know? So here, in order to protect our shoulder joint, we are not coming down at like a T. So you can kind of tell that my elbows are tilted in a little bit at a 45 degree angle from my side. The dumbbells are also tilted at a 45 degree angle. And I'm coming down and then pressing back up by squeezing my chest and also the front of my shoulders. Then I supersetted that with some good old lateral raises. Y'all already know for three sets of 15. So same thing here, retracting those shoulder blades back and down, dropping the shoulders away from my ears because this helps me so much with actually being able to focus on my shoulders more than anything. Keeping a slight bend in my arm, again, to protect that elbow. I have a nice athletic stance as well in my legs just to kind of be able to give with the weight. And same thing with that press. I'm bringing the dumbbells out kind of more so at like a 45 degree angle from my side rather than a full on T. And I'm stopping when my, when my arms, excuse me, become parallel with the ground. I'm not flinging them higher up towards the sky. And so then I did some bicep work. So I did some plate curls for three sets of 15. I actually don't know why I didn't choose dumbbells. I think I was bored. So I just grabbed a 25 pound plate, I think. Maybe a 35 pound plate. I don't know. But basically, I'm keeping my elbows tight towards my side here. The only movement here is at my elbow joint by moving my forearms, by contracting my biceps to get that weight up. So I'm not flailing my arms out to the side, as you can see. I'm staying nice and tight and stationary. And then with that for our triceps, I did um, three sets of 20. So these were technically, this is called a compound sat where I'm um, performing these two back to back with opposing muscle groups. So I personally like to just do good old dips. I don't know why I love these so much, but I like to have my feet out straight. And then I'm essentially just pressing down and getting that full range of motion, driving up through the palms of my hand and squeezing my triceps. Good morning, you guys happy friday it's about like 7 15 in the morning so i'm gonna go for a quick like 30 minute beach run i'll report back over it on the screen um and i'm gonna try to do it this time barefoot because i have done it before but i wore sneakers and i'm running on like the wet because the tide like changes so much here so like when it's low tide all that wet sand from when the tide was high is like much firmer so i don't want you guys thinking i'm like running on dry sand so it's not like very hard first of all second of all um, I just want to try it running barefoot just because it's good to let our feet breathe and like ground also at the same time It's like a two-in-one and we're getting some morning sun. So we love it. It's a bright bluebird day
we're back and drenched. It feels so good in here. Oh my God. All right, that ended up being more so like a 20, 25 minute run. I don't really ever track it. I just went back and looked at the clips that I took and the timestamps on them. But I did that completely barefoot and now my pointer toe and middle toe feel so chafed, <laughs> so ripped. Maybe that wasn't the best idea. I felt so like in the moment, I was like, oh yes, like this feels so healthy. Like I feel like I'm so nourishing myself with this. And then now I'm like, mm, maybe I tried a little too hard. Hopefully that doesn't last because it's annoying. That felt so good. And I just want like a little bit of a dance party. It's now 8 a.m. I'm gonna make some break. Make sure you take care of yourself today, y'all, because it's worth it. Seriously though, I was getting sunshine, grounding, and movement in all at once. <laughs> Imagine that.